<laughs> kind of chills on our <laughs> This is what I think about this. <laughs> Meanwhile, you got the little handy dandy uh, laptop uh, uh, tablet here. I have one. I'm going to get mine out on the next show. Yeah. Welcome back to Indie Film Screening. I'm Jerome Lee Brown with my host of the day, Mr. Stefan J. Davis. But it's like every day though, I mean, we, I'm not just the host for today, I'm the host all the time. Well, you're the host as we're filming it right now. So, what great films do you have for us today, almighty grateful one? Uh, well, this one is a little bit of a hard word to pronounce. <laughs> yes, yes, and I was trying to pronounce this word. This is yeah. called... Uh, maybe Anacusis, maybe, Anacusis. or Anacusis. I think it's Anacusis. Wow. Very interesting title, too, actually. I like it. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I thought it was really cool yeah. how they did that title, and it went along with the theme of the movie. I thought that was excellent. Uh, I like the whole film because it was done in black and white. I'm now starting to learn and appreciate and embrace black and white film because I really was not a big fan of black and white film. Not too much. Uh, but I'm starting to like a lot of them because they're coming in a little more than normal now mm -hmm. for us. But this particular film start off with an interesting twist then explains how the twist became a twist at the beginning of the film. Mm -hmm. But when you're watching it uh, at the beginning, you really don't have an idea of what's going on. That's true. Yeah, and I wanted to mention like the black and white thing. It did work for this, and I agree. Sometimes people can use black and white, and it's not right. Sometimes it's just right. Yeah, it's perfect. I think what they were doing with this one was kind of going really old school with it. Yeah. So they went yeah. like the black and white. It's a silent film actually too, and even utilized the uh, old school like titles. When you think about the silent films from way back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I agree with you, you know, what they didn't have those little words up there with the little background to it and stuff. So I think that's really what they were kind of going for. And it was unique. I don't want to spoil it, you know, because they did kind of let it unfold nicely. But I think what they did with that silent film in the black and white everything yeah. was really excellent because it, it had a lot of purpose to it. It wasn't yeah. just a silent film to be a silent film. It wasn't just a black and white film to be a black and white film. But it kind of integrated all those things to make it, and I don't want to spoil it, <laughs> to make it why it is what it is. I like the part, like you were saying, about the subtitles popping in from the old 40s and 30s and 20s style mm -hmm. of the film. And by reading the subtitles, it helps you explain the movie a little bit more. Although they're quick and short and brief, you know, there's not a lot of long, drawn-out titles, but uh, it gives you an idea of where they're going about it. But you'll, when you see the film, you'll understand why they did it that way. Mm -hmm. You understand the film, why why it was shot the way it was shot, mm -hmm. and why they use black and white. I have an idea why, but at the same time, I don't understand why. But it's kind of those funny, strange, mixed understanding how they did well, it. Well, you know, for it. a filmmaker, you never know for sure, because I've seen yeah. plenty of filmmakers use black and white because it's easier, right? Yeah, you, know, yeah. you don't have to do color correction and all kind of things. So sometimes it's just a, a way to be a little on the lazy side. I think they deliberately used black and white for this one, in my opinion. I don't know what to talk to the filmmaker. But I think they used it because they wanted to continue that whole 30s and 40s type of theme of black and white silent films. But then, like I said, put that unique twist to it, though. Well, the film itself was pretty well done. I thought the whole idea of the uh, whole film was a very creative way of getting people to appreciate and understand filmmaking. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, let people be aware of the situation that the film was about. Yeah. And they and did that, a good job. I'll make some notes here. I know that, that particular shot I mentioned in my notes. Uh, what I thought about was that um, I really liked that, that first shot. Mm -hmm. And then it came back to that shot later on. And so it was a unique way of composition and framing to create that kind of backdrop behind her. You see some kids running around playing. Um, and at first, I'm just like, okay, you know, that shot's okay, I suppose. And they used it later on in the, in the movie. And really, at that point, made a whole lot of sense why they did it. Um, and it really just brought you back to that first shot, which I think is always a unique kind of movie to do. Yeah. Um, now, I did feel like they held a little too long uh, because she really was like, I'm not sure what she was doing that second time around when they brought the second time 
when they were um, all the kids were out playing and stuff, and she's facing towards the camera. She's yeah, yeah, digging around or something. Down, yeah. I don't know what she's looking for. But I, I, when I saw that, you're right about that. Uh, mm -hmm. The the yeah, other thing about the film I didn't quite get, but I understand why they brought it. I understand a lot of things about this film. Why they chose not to have any music to a certain point. Um, it explains what the movie is about. I'm trying not to give the movie away, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we may have to give the yeah, movie away. Yeah, it was very, very silent. Type yeah, of film. yeah, it's a very silent film yeah. up to a certain point, mm -hmm. and the music kicks in when when he explained to you what happens. So the, the is it good to say reveal. why why is do you want to keep that a mystery secret? Um, if we can, I mean, because I don't want to ruin it, but yeah. I also don't want it to be such a vague yeah. review that it's not worth. Yeah. <laughs> so why, we, we, we're, we're kind of tippy toeing around so, this, yeah. this this reason uh, why. I think that's the most enjoyable thing about the film when you yeah. watch it. You're like, why is it this? What's going on? And then you say, oh, okay, oh, wow, yeah. nice, very cool. But if you look up the word, what the what the name? Well, then you know yeah. right. Yeah, there, you know yeah. exactly what's going on. Possibly, yeah. But uh, I thought the film was a pretty decent film. I mean, I, yeah, think yeah. I have some notes here, too. Um, One note I'll mention real fast was yeah, like right, the very yeah. first shot in the film uh, was this wheel spinning. I thought that was a really cool shot. You know, they had a nice angle and the wheel was spinning and the bicycle wheel is kind of spinning and things. So I thought that was a, a great shot. Mm -hmm. um, that was one of the... I already talked about the, the black and white design film. What else was... There's a couple little things that I noticed that weren't perfect, but of course, you know, we want to get us put this stuff out here because as yeah. filmmakers, we can think about what we see and perfect our own crafts. Um, so when the lens, I noticed, had a little something on there and the outside shots, a little overexposed possibly there. Um, not all of it, but just certain scenes and things. Um, so, you know, just kind of watching that exposure, make sure the lenses are clean and stuff before you start shooting. Okay, yeah. Because um, I had a lens one time, and it wasn't even dirty. What it was was I had like some kind of spot on it like some kind of black spot from like a lens maybe from the sun damaged it or something so you could always see like this little black dot and it was really annoying i had to get rid of the lens oh that could jack up a whole film yeah yeah absolutely then you have to rewrite the whole thing all around that little black dot that was the uh the, the black moon coming in <laughs> kind of working in the set all together so just to, you know give these tips and, and things for other filmmakers because we all have been there done that yeah another thing i noticed um the shots out there when they're playing basketball and stuff, I'm, I'm guessing they probably shot this in maybe 24 frames a second. Um, shutter speeds, it might, it might have been a little on the slower side. Um, and so the, I noticed like a little strobe effect when they're running and stuff. Like it's different when you've got like a person just sitting there on the camera and not really moving a lot. Okay. Um, but when you have people running, you want to make sure you either bring the shutter up or you know, change the frame rate or something to avoid that kind of stroby effect there. Uh, my only thing about, not my only thing, but one of the things about my film, which what we're at right now, with one of something you mentioned, where she, we don't know what she was doing. She was cleaning, yeah, sure. adjusting, moving something around, I don't know. But uh, we couldn't figure out what that was about. That would have been interesting. She would have let us know what that part was about. Uh, beginning of the film, uh, there was a lot of blackness going on. I mean, I don't know if that was intentional, Doing that blackness, no sound, no nothing, just complete blackness for 15 seconds. Um, as a filmmaker, I think when you keep people sitting in the dark for 15, 20, 30 seconds, that's a long time. I mean, 15 seconds can be a, a very long time just sitting there looking at a blank screen with nothing going on. Mm -hmm. These have a white bouncing ball going around or something. Tough, but it's yeah. not a bad thing. It's just something yeah. that uh, I want to point out. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about that too more and more. Yeah. Like, I don't think it was deliberate. At first, I thought possibly because of the whole silent film yeah. and, and what it all stood for and meant. But I think what they might have done, and this is just me just kind of throwing stuff out here, is uh, maybe in the export, it was just not all the way back towards the timeline, the very first yeah, timeline. It could be a possibility, so you yeah. Got a few of those extra seconds when you export something out, yeah. possibly, I don't know. Or just they just wanted to make it long for some reason. Yeah, I don't well, know. 15 seconds long. But, they counted. Well, yeah, that's too long, though. <laughs> yeah, so I would say 15 seconds. That's that almost like enough. You can put a lot of clips in that 15 seconds. Yeah. Uh, the special effect, not using any special effect, with this particular scene, when the car was backing out the driveway, mm. hit the kid. Now, in the background, we can see the kid playing and doing his little thing. Mm. We see mom in front of the camera, mm. and it, you see the car actually back out. And, you know, you don't see him hit the kid, but give you an illusion that he hit the kid. Mm. Now, I thought that was a pretty good trick photography, a way of not moving cameras around without using special effects mm. the old-fashioned way by using a body to hide what really took place. Mm. So, what I can 
to my best knowledge, I'm going to assume that the body, the kid was hiding behind the body, and when the car backed out, the kid probably moved out the way or something. I'm not giving away any, any yeah. top secrets. But uh, put it all together, the car backed out, gave you the impression he hit the kid, mm -hmm. and I thought that was great. Oh, wow, yeah. what a beautiful way of doing that a special effect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and actually, that's what I was talking about earlier. I just didn't want to mention the details quite yet. I wasn't sure how to go about it, but... That, Since that I killed same, it, okay. No, that's cool. That, that same <laughs> shot there is what you see in the beginning. So I yeah. thought that was kind of cool that they used that same kind of shot for the composition. And like you said, kind of using that to block it off to where you can't really see the kid get hit by the car. Yeah. Uh, excellent, because, yeah, like you say, you sometimes don't have the budget for all those extra special effects and all these kind of crazy things. So using that framing in that way, I thought it was really great. And I'm not even sure if the kid was there at all, actually. Well, <laughs> I don't know if there was ever a kid there. Yeah, well, we saw him. I mean, we, you, you I mean, see. saw kids earlier, yeah. but they kind of cut to one shot. So they could have just not even had the kid there at all behind her body. Because I didn't really see when the car came out. I didn't see anything change from that point, though. Do I, so have, to, I, do I have to find a clip to prove you wrong on this one? You could try. Yeah. Kids right behind their, behind their mother. Cool. There's the kid. Same shot. So I feel like I oh, wake up okay. Let's see how long it is. Mine's still listening. So the kid is gone now. Yeah, that's what I felt like. I just felt like it was like the kid was gone. Like oh, I knew he before. was gone. I just, I just thought it was pretty cool how well, I see, yeah, they yeah. used it. They used it. They didn't, they didn't stop or cut away or nothing. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So he's still back there. Camera's still rolling. No cutaway scenes, no cutaway shot. And the people saw the you know, saw the kid still back there. And you're like, oh my gosh, the kid is still back there behind mom. Here comes a car rolling down the street here. And then all all of a sudden, you know, the car stops just right behind where mom was standing, mm -hmm. where the kid was standing. One continuous shot. Mm -hmm. And gave me that illusion that now I'm going to assume that the kid probably moved closer to his mom, out the way. Yeah, so he has a choice to go. Yeah, probably up. Um, did a good job of blocking everything off. So yeah, yeah. it seemed like probably came up that way. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to assume that the kid probably walked towards her. Towards her. He could be yeah, out the way, out, out the, the camera way, out yeah. the angle, and everything. Mm -hmm. And then there's a shot, cutaway shot, put everything back together again. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, a shot well done, an uh, angle well done, and a uh, way of saving time and editing and everything, job pretty well done. I thought that really stuck out more for uh, for them in this particular film. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, with anything being said uh, about this film you have to, to add on to? Um, I think that was it, you know. I think from beginning to end it was definitely uh, pretty cool. You know, yeah. did a good job with it. Um, I think that twist... You know, towards the end, revealing um, why things played out the way they did and things was great. Yeah, I thought it turned out pretty decent. And uh, you can see that the mom is explaining to the uh, to the detectives or the family child support protecting group. Um, you know, when your kid gets hurt like that, you're going to have some people come by looking at you on an interview and everything. And that's what she's doing right now, explaining to them what's going on, what happened, how it happened. So, uh, this was a, a really... Great film, and uh, thank you very much for sending that in to us. And we hope that uh, you have other footage you want to send to us. We'd be more happy to look at them. Absolutely. Thank you. Right. Thank right. You also got something else to say? No, that's, that's it. it. Thanks right. for watching. All right, we're out of here. Time. See you later. Yeah, you got a remote control, man. Yeah, I should have hooked it back up, but like I said, that battery, man. I don't preserve it. <laughs>